What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Matt Brill, here to tell you guys about my friends from Big Friendly Productions. Now, they specialize in creating merchandise for bands, artists, and even lifestyle brands. With their in-house equipment, they can provide shirts, branded hats, and more, as well as some graphic design services. They offer order fulfillment to handle your online orders and ship your merch straight to your fans from their shop. Down in good old Birmingham, Alabama, baby. Now, whether you are getting your first shirt, you're just starting out, or you're going on a 40 show run, Run, hit them up for all your merchandising needs. Check out their website, bigfriendlyproductions.com, or shoot them an email, merchandising at bigfriendlyproductions.com. Now we're going to get into the episode. This is Outside the Round with Matt Brill. Also, make sure you guys like, rate, subscribe, tell your mama and them. And for more details and uh, to get in touch with the rest of the familia, visit raiserowdy.com. Now let's get into it. Outside the Round with me, Matt Brill, a Raised Rowdy podcast. This is Outside the Round with Matt Burrill for Rage Rally Podcast. What is going on, everybody? Another edition of the of uh, Outside the Round today with me, Matt Burrill, and uh, it is a Friday, and we've got our man Graham Bunn hanging <laughs> out with us, um, dude. So we've been friends on the internet for a while. Yeah, it's been a minute. It's been, I think, since like right around like COVID quarantine. I think is when we first got linked up on IG. Yeah, I was gonna say the beginning of COVID, but yeah, yeah. roughly around that time. Yeah, like around there. So you're not. How often do you get out here to Nashville? Because you're an LA guy, right? I'm an LA guy, so I get out here. I don't, I want to say like three, four times a year, like once a quarter, and then uh, working in and out of country music. Obviously, Nashville's the place to be. So yeah, uh, it's been an elongated stay this time, and then I did a long one last year, roughly about six weeks consecutively so it's been cool you did you did a whole six weeks here just straight i did uh you know we we talked about a little bit earlier kip moore is is a good buddy and and someone who i respect as an artist and he was working on his album so i was out here for some of that tail end of that process like in and out of the studio with him it was it was super dope like it was really cool that he included me in that process he's not really like that like he the the first day i'll never forget it um jaron from Oh man, where's Cadillac you? Three? Yeah, Jaron from Cadillac Three. I was yeah. drawing a blank on that. I walked in, he was like, Who are you? I was like, Oh yeah, I'm just a friend <laughs> of Kip's. And he was like, Oh, cool. And he could not have been cooler. And he's he's a genius. Like in studio yeah. to see him work, he is a genius. Uh, I would never tell him that after hanging out with him. Um, <laughs> but I'm sure he would love to hear that. Later he told me, he was like, Man, I don't let you know. I've done like I think he's done three or four projects with him. And uh, he said, I've never seen him bring somebody in the studio, man. I was like, oh, cool. So it was it was nice. Kip didn't tell me that part, but it was cool <laughs> that I was included in it, man. So it was pretty dope. Yeah, and the energy of being in a room when there's when yeah. when you're in the studio, because I've done that with some with some friends and stuff, and but not not any like Trey and like Muscat, they'll have friends come in and well, like, Trey's pop the in man, the so that's cool. Yeah, they'll like pop, shout out Trey. You yeah, know? he'll yeah, shout out Trey. Thank you for letting us use your studio, yeah, buddy. Dude. DM Monday Studios. Um, but um like He'll have folks pop in, but like to have to get a look into the creative process for one of your buddies who's also, I'm guessing, you probably became friends because you probably started out as a Kip Moore fan, right? Um, no, yeah. I mean, it's a funny story. I like, I, you know, I thought Kip was talented. I worked in just like you, I worked in country radio, so I met him in work spots. And I'll give Kip all the credit in the world on this and that, you know, Kip keeps his circle tight and he's and in, he's like the consummate professional like if he needs to be somewhere he's there five minutes early 10 minutes early uh he'll do whatever he needs to do to get his artwork out there but it's like we weren't chummy by no means i liked his music but I, i'm a fan of storytelling so yeah. I, I like a lot of people's music and so i think our friendship just grew over the years like we were cool with one another like hey how you doing man good to see you keep it moving for years before um, we started like kind of hanging out and i went through some stuff in, in my life that he caught wind of because we have some really close mutual friends and he he reached out and was like yo I'm, I'm gonna be in town in a month let's go grab a beer like i want to check on you and that was the first time that i was like oh all right well maybe this isn't like a work thing that was kind of cool and yeah. so once you get to know kip as a person and i know not a lot of people do he's one of the coolest dudes on the planet yeah like just ridiculous i, I love him i'm so proud of him and yeah it was it's been really 
it's been a blessing for me to be a part of his life. Yeah, the first um, the first like show that I went to going out of college where I was like, all right, I fuck with country music. I, yeah. I was in it was in New Jersey. It was the mm -hmm. um, at the PNC Bank Art Center in Homedale, and it was it was Drake White and the and the Fire whatever the, yeah, yeah, the yeah. band name that was attached yeah. to Drake at the time. Kip Moore, something, something about a truck had just come out, and yeah. then Toby Keith, and it was oh, one wow. of those nights where you never know what Toby's gonna say or do. <laughs> well, was that's like, every night. With yeah, Toby. it was every. Oh, dude, yeah, I've seen Toby like ten times, and no song has ever sounded the same. Yeah, and it, it just brings the party. But that was in 2013. Mm -hmm. So to see the different evolution of an artist like Kip Moore too, to where he's at now. Yeah, it's I mean, truck sick. still one of his biggest songs. Oh yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, he's the man. So it was cool to be a part of that process. But yeah, that that kept me in Nashville, which I learned a lot about Nashville when you stay here for an extended amount of time, like I was on my way over here to the studio and the traffic might be worse here than it is in LA. Really? Man, it's terrible here. That's what, a bold what, statement. What's going on out here, man? Well, there's no mass transit. Good there's not a gracious. single drop. Though. There technically is a train in Hermitage out near where I live that you can take. And it drops you off right on the river across from the stadium. Well, you're a New York guy. That must've been an adjustment. Yeah, no, no mass transit, bro. Yeah, yeah, like I've been going. I used to average going to like ten to fifteen Yankees games a year, but I would never drive. Yeah, I'd of course always, not. I'd, I'd drive. Well, I'd drive over the Tappan Zee Bridge, get on yeah. the train in Tarrytown, take it in, have a couple beers. Is it the A the train that takes you up there? The it's four, just five, six? it's just um, Metro North. Oh, okay, so I wasn't in, but I've done the subway system, and that's yeah. where I want to. I want to get Sweet Boy in there because he's from Selma, Alabama. Okay, they still ride horses through drive-throughs there. Like they don't know what they're doing. But yeah, like, that's the, sick. Because yeah, the the um. The like big cities like Nashville is getting to that level where it's mm -hmm. it's a big freaking city. Yeah, like four people cut me off on the way over here. Didn't care nothing about it. I was like, I'm in a big city now. This is not you know if you're in a small town, people are like, oh my bad. No, like four times people are like get yeah. the out of the way. Yeah. Especially like, all with all those mergers and when you have 24 and 40 meeting up and it's just such a hub and like we get over 100 bachelorette parties a year. Yeah. I think it's probably did, closer to 200. I did now. read where it took over Vegas as the bachelorette party yeah. capital of of the world now yeah and dude <laughs> and, and the the downtown is a i guess it's grown a lot so i've been here since 2018 okay um like i got down here right before aldine's and luke's opened up okay. and broadway was still i mean crazy town was still there like it was still kind of that that bro country era bro like, and now it's turned into where the all the all the artists that were booming there have their own places sure second avenue bro is about to be the spot again oh yeah second avenue used to be the spot before when broadway still you gotta had, fill me in what's second avenue second avenue it's so there's it's the where, midtown bars that are right mm, near so, here? Sec, so second avenue down off broadway okay. so it's downtown it's going so if you're like at bridgestone it's walking down towards the river okay and second avenue you make that left they're about there's about to be like Luke Combs just partnered with um, Ryman Hospitality Group to take over the Wild Horse. Love, so Luke Combs is gonna Luke have Combs. a bar. Yep. They just announced a they're gonna call it um is it Nashville Live McElwain, they what you said they were gonna call it? It's gonna be a PBR bar. Um I'm with, too old for Broadway, yeah. so all this is gonna be yeah, wasted. Dude, what, it's me. just gonna be chaos. And <laughs> they're knocking it down to be a one a one lane road and extending out the street thing. They yeah. have like dining outside. It's just like Live Oak, which we do our writers' yeah. nights at. Yeah, they, I've been to a few writers around at Live Oak. Yeah, it's yeah. a great venue. We love love the team there and happy to be a part of the Live Oak family. They just bought out the old BB Kings and are gonna be turning that into like a venue and mm. a spot where they're running. Barstool just opened up this past so week. So I went to the uh, Barstool one for the grand opening. What'd you think? Loved it. Yeah, I thought it was great. Amazing. Yeah, it fits the vibe, and they've been they've been kind of inching their ways into Nashville with what with what the with busting with the boys yeah. and plenty balls being down here every couple months and yeah. like things like that. So it's cool to see them have it. DraftKings is about to fucking open up like a sports book bar. Yeah, Nashville's popping. That's it's the, crazy, Nashville's crazy, dude. Yeah. It's chaos. It's it's wild. So are you from Cali originally? No, or? I'm from Raleigh, North Carolina. Oh shit, that's right. We were talking about that. You were saying how oh, Trey yeah, mentions yeah. Raleigh. Yeah. yeah, I like so you're a big big Wolfpack guy. No, I'm a I'm a Tar Heel. Really? What yeah. was that like growing up in Raleigh and being a Tar Heel? Well, both my parents graduated from NC State, so obviously as a small kid, I pulled for state not knowing, you know, I wasn't making choices for my own. I just wanted to be, you know, want, my dad's my hero. He pulled for yeah. state, so I pulled for Big state. Big Jimmy V guy. Yeah, and so uh, <laughs> when you move away from home, I think it might have been a little bit earlier. My sister went to Carolina, so I started pulling for Carolina just because of her, and then uh, I'm a basketball guy, and the program was great, and it was always exciting to pull for him. But when you leave – North Carolina, there's nothing more North Carolina than the University of North Carolina. So, like, it was kind of like a badge of honor of, like, oh, this is where I'm from. This is what I rep. And, yeah. you know, nothing against NC State because I was born in Raleigh. I was born on Tobacco Road in between NC State and Chapel Hill. But, um, yeah, when you walk around anywhere in the country and you tell people you're from Carolina, they're like, oh, you must be a Tar Heel. 
you know. So yeah. it was just more of like it, it deeply enrooted me still with my hometown uh, being a Carolina Tar Heel fan. So that was why. Well, one thing that you have in common with all the Wolfpack fans is fuck Duke. Yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> it, which <laughs> is <laughs> odd because Coach K came to some of my high school games, and uh, at one point in time, there was an opportunity to walk on at Duke to play basketball. Really? And one of my best friends is Jay Will. So, Jay, if yeah. you see this, um, <laughs> we lived together in New York uh, for quite a long time. Oh, no like, shit. It was weird because I'm a diehard Tar Heel, and he's obviously not. So, yes. you know, we would get into several entertaining conversations. How about big it. is that? How big is that rivalry? Because I've gotten to see, like, I grew, I grew up Yankees, Red Sox, like the New York, Boston stuff, or New York, yeah. Philly stuff. And then I've only worked with Axe from Alabama, you mm-hmm. know? So I've only worked with Muscadine with Trey. So I've gotten to experience Man, the Iron I love Bowl. Muscadine. Yeah, by oh, the way. they're good, great dudes. Love Charlie and Gary. But they're, it's funny because when I was with them, I was technically an, an Auburn fan. Oh, okay. Because they were big Ward Eagle guys. So, yeah. We to time sound check on show for shows on Saturday during football season with them being able to watch Auburn football. Yeah, Auburn I mean, football wasn't very good at that point. Yeah. And then Trey, huge Alabama fan. They're yeah. a big roll tide camp. And I got to experience like what it's like the when you don't have too many professional sports teams, the college rivalries sure. are just crazy. So yeah. you growing up on, on Tobacco Road, you have that that trio. Yeah, for sure. And then when I was growing up, we didn't have the Panthers and we didn't have the Hornets. So it was the same thing. It's kind of, you know, like the Alabama Auburn thing. I would say it's very much like the Michigan, Ohio State. The thing that makes it uniquely cool is that that rivalry is separated by seven miles seven and a half miles. So you're on top of each other's fan bases. Like everywhere you go with somebody that's pulling for one of those two schools, you know, big shout out to NC state, but most of the NC state fans live on NC state's campus. Yeah. They're like paying tuition. So yeah. <laughs> once you leave NC state, you're either a Duke or Carolina fan. And so yeah. I don't know if any other rivalry, the fan bases are on top of each other like that. Yeah. So yeah, it's pretty intense. It's amazing. I just got a chance to, this is such a name drop, so I apologize. I, I interviewed Matt Liner for Yeah, USC, I saw that. I saw that, And bro. he talked about rivalries, and he was like, man, one of the bucket list things that I ever wanted to do was go to a Carolina Duke game. So, like, growing up in it, you're aware of it, but getting out and being on another coast and hearing other people talk about how dope the rivalry is, you're like, okay, yeah, it's pretty massive. Yeah, and for a guy that's that's a West Coast football guy to yeah. be like, I want to go to this East Coast ACC basketball rivalry. Yeah, it's that amazing. That speaks to why it is one of the best in the country. Yeah. So where did you go after after Carolina? Like, where'd you? Well, yeah, I've, I've been all over the place. Um, so I played professionally in Germany for a little bit, and then came back, moved to New York, lived in New York City, just try to figure out. I mean, this is incredibly embarrassing. Just try to figure out life outside of hoop. And yeah. I started modeling, which was I was a terrible model. Well, so this a is thing not to a do drop. With, that's a thing to do in New York. Yeah, for sure. And it. I got asked to do like this big job and I thought it was gonna be so dope. And I show up and they're like <laughs> asking me to pass out hors d'oeuvres in my underwear. I was like, Okay, <laughs> yeah, I'm not I'm not cool, man. Like this is not cool. I'm I'm gonna figure something else out. <laughs> yeah. Um and then I, I started dating this actress, which, you know, her she was shooting a show in New York for all my children. Then all of those shows moved to California. So we moved to California. I chased her. Mistake. And, you know, just kind of fell into country radio. So, like, New York to L.A., Germany, all over, just trying to live life. And then, honestly, when I grew up, I was like, man, I want to live next door to my parents. And so I have not followed that plan very well. Yeah, well, my plan growing up was I wanted to stay in New York. I wanted mm-hmm. to work in sports media. So, mm-hmm. like, I was the kid. I went to Ryder um, mm-hmm. in um, in Jersey. Yeah, with small in the MAC, baby, the Metro yeah. Atlantic Athletic Conference. We were the all them all them Catholic Jesuit schools, and then you have a couple private schools. Are like, your team colors green and white? No, no is that, that right? is uh, Manhattan. Oh, okay, that's Manhattan. that's Manhattan. Oh, okay. It's got like, Manhattan, Fairfield, Marist, mm-hmm. Iona. Yeah, all the very small gyms. Like mm-hmm. our our we were a Division one school in our. Gymnasium held a hundred, held sixteen hundred people. Because Jay's from Jersey, so I'm familiar yeah. with Ryder a little bit. Yeah. yeah, so I wanted to like be on ESPN and do all that. Like, I interned mm-hmm. with the MSG Network growing up and did I wanted yeah. to be a sports guy. Yeah, I never thought I'd work in like I always loved country music, but I never mm-hmm. thought I'd be fourteen hours away from home in a different time zone in the South. How did it start for you, country? So, so it started because I mean, you're a radio guy. You did radio yeah, for a while. Yeah, yeah. So I did. Um, so for me, like my first concert growing up was Tim McGraw. It was back when it was Hosscat Tim McGraw doing the Eric Church thing, where he that, there we go. when he, like when when Church did the 61 Days thing, yeah. and it was no no openers and Hosscat Tim McGraw with the Fu Manchu mm-hmm. playing three hours a night. Yeah. Um, just crazy shit. Um, so I saw him in, in 03. I was in the third grade, and country had always been like. But I grew up like listening to all kinds of different music. But then when I went to college, I was I got a job with the athletic. Department 
department. I was mm-hmm. like helping run the press conferences, do all the the sports information shit, get yeah. to know the players, and then working. I was on writing for the back for the uh, sports section of the school paper, doing all sports related stuff. Nice. And I remember walking in because I've been going. I went to a couple country shows that summer, and I learned that the the odds as a single eighteen year old, the odds are very much in your favor at a country music concert. You yeah. see a lot of lot of lot of pretty girls at a country show. Um, That's still the case. Oh, it is very much, case, yes. very much still the case. Yeah. Um, which is which between that and just like the culture of it, it was real. It was a lot of fun. And then I saw I walked into my college radio station for a meeting, and I saw on the calendar I saw something that said Redneck Radio. I was like, mm-hmm. "What the fuck is that?" Yeah. So I got into doing that, and then I realized how you can get access to artists through radio. Like mm-hmm. the country community has such a respect for country radio, even still to this yeah, day. Yeah, facts. Yeah, for back sure. in 2013, and I, we started reaching out and getting artists on our little 25 watt college radio station that nobody fucking listened to. Yeah, but we had all these guys and girls as they were coming up, and I was just like all right well i guess i'm i'm into this now and then had some buddies that were in the local scene in jersey moved down here and they used to call me up once a week be like dude you got to get down here dude you got to get down here yeah. came down to visit and halfway through that week i had my job at whiskey row and yeah. had a spot in spring hill 45 minutes figured 45 minutes is a lot close 45 minutes outside of town it's a lot closer than 14 hours away from town yeah, you know? yeah definitely yeah so that's, that's an upgrade that's kind of that's kind of how it happened nice just using and never look back, man. No, and now look dude. at you, just a mogul in the country music community. I mean, just mogul. a mogul. <laughs> we're work, <laughs> just crushing we're, it. We're, we're working on it, man. Hey, the studio is nice, man. It, I'm, I'm, I'm halfway joking. But I'm halfway serious. You're yeah. doing something right, man. Yeah, dude. It's it's a cool it's a cool spot, and um, it's been cool to like watch this grow, and then like to watch artists grow from. And you've been around the game long enough, where mm-hmm. you've seen artists like like a Kip, like different. Different folks come up over the last few years. Like sure. I'm sure you remember you remember your first time meeting old old Morgan Wallen, old Luke yeah. Combs, all those guys. Yeah. Those were guys I had my college radio show in twenty fourteen. Well, Luke and I went to App State together, so oh, I, you know, yeah, okay. I, You're, I had a, I got an in with Church, and and uh, and when I got my start in radio, that was like my in. I went okay. to App State. So Adam Church is a good friend of ours. Oh, and amazing! So yeah, Adam Adam's opened up a bunch of shows for for Trey, and we've gotten to know him very well. And the, I don't know him, but I know his story. And yeah. I, you know, he's obviously a legend in Boone. Yeah, and it's the that there's something everybody talks about Georgia. And mm-hmm. Georgia's great. We love Georgia. Yeah. There's something in the water there with country music. The Carolinas do not get enough credit. The Carolinas and Alabama. Yeah. There is a lot of good music that comes yeah. out of there. We do all right. And especially in the in I mean, the we got two world. guys up for like artist of the year every year now. So yeah. especially our little school. So I I'm really proud of it. Yeah, what is Boone? I've never been to Boone. What is oh, Boone, North Carolina like? It's God's country. Yeah, it's just gorgeous. Mountains everywhere, picturesque. Uh, people are nice. You know, it's still got that small town charm, but it's exploding. It's obviously a huge football town now. I mean, they were top 25, like three out of the last five years. Where were you the day that they upset Michigan at the big house? Do you remember where you were? I was. I was slinging drinks in New York City on 42nd and 2nd Street <laughs> at a bar called McFadden's. Oh, dude, I love McFadden's. Yeah. That's so a legendary place. Me and a teammate from App State, we used to bartend and manage there. And, uh, yeah, we, were, we had a few beers that night. And then, you know, shout out to Corey Lynch, the guy who blocked the the field goal he's a buddy of ours and Dude, married yeah. sissy graham and yeah it's cool boone is similar to nashville in that it's it's a large city now it's not as large as nashville but uh you end up knowing everybody you you send you see people around and you get to know them pretty quickly and so yeah it was a great place there's there's a reason eric church named his son boone he loves it yeah and i have i have family in east tennessee like mm-hmm. just over the other side of the mountains like yeah. the tri-cities so like bristol johnson city like mm-hmm. that area and I never went to it, but they used to take my sister and like my cousins to what's that big fucking? There's a, a big ass house, the Biltmore. Is yeah, it? the Biltmore. City. I think that's in Asheville, though, right? Is it? Is that? Is that yeah, Asheville? That's in Asheville. Yeah. Ash, how far? I think so. Is Asheville and Boone are kind of far? From, or no, no, maybe an hour, close. hour fifteen. Okay, maybe? so like the same yeah. type of type of Carolina. I mean, Asheville put out some products too. I mean, I think Chase Rice is from Asheville, and uh, there's a couple other people that that right out of Asheville, and I think. Combs got his start playing gigs down in, in Asheville. I mean, I know he played for uh, Adam and Boone for a little yeah. bit, but I think it was really down in Asheville, if I'm not mistaken, that he started playing and catching some 
you know, social media attention for his st- stuff and his covers and everything. Yeah. So when did so when did you kind of get started doing the doing the radio stuff? How do you go from slinging drinks at McFadden's? That's so cool that you said McFadden's too. Yeah, I've had McFadden's some nights saloon. in there. Man, I, we've all had some <laughs> nights in there. Um, rest in peace, McFadden's. Yes. I think COVID got it. Yeah. Uh, I think there was a McFadden's here for a little while. There was downtown. There unfortunately, was. I think it got affected with the bombing. Yep. Oh, man, yeah, which terrible. is where all these new bars are opening. Oh, up, really? It's kind of wild. Oh, okay. oh, is that the one you were describing? Second, Second Avenue, Avenue. That whole. Strip. Oh, okay. That whole strip is where all these new bars are opening, and it's going to be four or five story bars. Just okay, I'm rocking. familiar then, just because the the McFadden spot. Yep. and, and yeah. that's terrible. You know, for all the businesses that were affected by that horrific. I mean, Nashville's been through some stuff in the last few years. Yeah, dude. I remember the in in a two week span, we had the tornado. And we had COVID start yeah, within like man. a week of each other. Yeah, that's... Yeah. Remember from being like, I got a busy year of touring with the Muscadine guys to then God, being like, hey, this week's guys. canceled, this week's canceled. Oh, the whole tour's canceled. I'm like, oh, shit. I left LA uh, a couple weeks ago for this business trip that I've, that I've been on, and Muscadine played like the day after I left. I was so pissed. I've never seen them live. Like, You've I love never them. seen them live? No, uh-uh. Bro. And they, huge and they were fans. Yeah, and they were just on their... That was their first time out. West yeah. Coast. Yeah, I had never seen them out there, but I, you know, I played them on our show all the time. Yeah, like, yeah, I'm a big fan, big fan. Love those guys. Yeah, they're they're good dudes, and what's what's cool about what they do is they're and it's awesome that you play them on your show all the time. They I play are the full amount. Pieces is like my my new thing right now. And then obviously they've they've got the the rock stuff they just dropped that we play. Yeah. Jamie all over. We play a bunch. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, dude. They're the fact that they're independent like they are. Yeah, which is, is probably smart. I mean, there's... Yeah. I've had so many conversations about independent or record deal, but uh, there was someone who offered me an A and R job not too long ago, and the first thing I thought of was like, I wonder if I could get musket on. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, yeah, that would be sick. Yeah, they. Well, there's something. But what you have to do is you have to have the work ethic to not mm-hmm. really want to have the team around you because yeah. I've seen that with Trey. Like we saw when when Trey had his explosion and it was independent, we were doing everything ourselves. It was very yeah. incredibly grassroots, and it still is in a sense. Mm-hmm. But he's he's got a label deal now. But now you have all these resources. Mm-hmm. Gary and Charlie just put the whole team on their back. Like they're both Greg Jennings, and they just get after it. Yeah, and. And they're, I mean, they're already like record four is yeah. fucking already in the works. Like, yeah. It's I mean, I can crazy. remember hearing Port, Port Swing Angel for the first yep. time and being like, man, these dudes, they're going to be around for as long as they want to be. Yeah. Yeah. And they, and I mean, they're as good of a, as good of a duo in country music that there's been yeah. in the last 10 years. It's, it's wild. And they and the class of guys and girls that they came up with that were around that same time. Look at what Laney's doing. Look, yeah. They're under that Luke Combs tree. You yeah. Look that pieces song. I think Laney's on that song. Yep. Oh yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. That was cause I used to co-host their podcast with them. I helped produce and co-host that. And we had Laney. On mm-hmm. for an episode, nice. um, not long after they. they she's did got that. a future, I think. I think. I think so. Yeah, I think so. Got a future. I think so. Um, how's like the what is the West Coast scene like as far as country music? Because you guys have, I call it country music Coachella. I, that's what yeah. I call stagecoach. I'm, yeah. I'm like, I want. Have you go. been to Coachella? No, but okay, well, and I haven't you been would to stagecoach. Yeah, <laughs> you well, would I never say like, that. <laughs> from what it looks like, it yeah. looks like that. Sure. Compared to other ones, like I was just at Tailgate and Tall Boys uh-huh. in Bloomington, Illinois. Yeah. How was that? It was. It was. Redneck as fuck. I'm going to country concert in Ohio. Like I've experienced the Midwest, I've experienced the Northeast, I've experienced the Southeast. I guess just it just looks very. It looks like that kind of Coachella thing. Well, if you've ever been to Coachella, which I've been to several Coachellas, and then you go to Stagecoach because they're back to back. If anyone's not familiar, they're just there are two music festivals. Coachella is an all genre music festival that like 112 people yeah. go to, 112,000 people go to. Stagecoach is held the third weekend after a two weekend run of Coachella. If you've ever been to both. They're they're very polar different. opposites. They yeah. are polar they're opposites. They're polar opposites. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, I'm judging, but Coachella's drug culture and after parties. Like half the people that go to Coachella don't even go to the festival. They just go to the after parties. Oh, it's that Hollywood vibe yeah, where it's, it's like, like, who cares about the main event? We're going to the like after party. Victoria's Secret party or so and so's party, and like it's cool. Like you get to do it. I did yeah. it once. One of my friends, um, he's the lead singer of Laney. Oh and no so, shit. Cool. I went and watched. He played the main stage at Coachella, and he was like, "Yo, you got to come, like, come down." So, all right, really cool. And obviously, he got invited to everything. So we got to experience a lot of Coachella. And then I was like, "Okay, I mean, I, I get it, but I wouldn't do it again. It's just not for me. I, not like, your I thing. like the music." Yeah. So, um, yeah, I guess from the outsider in, you could say it's the Coachella because they're both in the same area, right? There's the same fields. It's the same venue. Same everything. So, so wait, they that people that run that, they, yeah, run Golden that, Voice. 
It's wow. Coachella weekend one, Coachella weekend two, Stagecoach weekend three. What a chaotic month. Oh, yeah. People make their mortgages. They put their houses up on Airbnb and just cake for three weekends, and then they, they're they good good to go for the year. What are like some of the amusements and attractions within, within um, Stagecoach? Because I've heard nothing but good things about it. You yeah, know? no, like, I'm just, not hating on Stagecoach at all. I, I mean, I was fortunate. Shout out Amazon Music. I got to host it this year. So oh, no was, shit. They, do, uh, they did a sick. partnership for the very first year. They did a live stream. So like if you wanted to watch Stagecoach, if you had Amazon Prime, they streamed the entire show. And oh, I, cool. I was the host, um, or one of the hosts. There was three of us. And so they... You know, they get all the different stages. There's four or five different stages there. And there's activations. This year they did a partnership with Yellowstone because a lot of the artists from Yellowstone, Ryan Bingham, Laney, um, Luke Grimes, they all performed. Taylor Sheridan was there. And so, like, there was a whole – it wasn't my part of, of the job. I didn't get to go over there. But they did a whole activation where you could go in and, like, they rebuilt one of the barns from wow. Yellowstone. So you go in and check it out and meet some of the cast members, stuff like that. That's cool. Yeah, it was cool. Um, but yeah, it's very different from Coachella. Highly recommended if you, I mean, I've been to a few. Stagecoach is my favorite. Uh, I mean, I'm biased because I am a Southern California country guy. Yeah. Uh, and I know what an event it is because out there, people, there, I mean, there's 13 million people in Los Angeles County. So when you go out, not everybody is a country music fan. But you don't realize, oh, wait a minute, there's so many people here. There's, it's just watered down. So when you go to a country show, you're around all these people, and you're like, where do all these people live? They live all over. It's just L.A. is so big, like, yeah. they, you know, you're not running into them a bunch. Yeah, that's – and then, but there is kind of that community to where if you are going to a lot of club shows – in, oh, the, yeah. in the uh, like, because that's how I felt coming up in the Jersey scene. Yeah, like I'd go. You to, make friends quickly. I'd go to Jenks mm. every Wednesday night during the summer yeah. and see the artists that were coming up doing mm. the doing the free full band radio show thing. Yeah, and but you would see you would recognize people each week that would sure. be in the front row that would be doing the meet and greet that would be buying the merch that would be out in the smoking yeah, section dedicated. ripping darts like yeah. those same those same folks and I feel like the West Coast and. The Northeast kind of have that similar vibe because mm -hmm. folks down in the South are like, "Oh, California, they don't know country music." Yeah. shit, they don't know country music. You ever heard yeah. of Merle Haggard and yeah. fucking Bakersfield? You ever heard of Dwight Yoakam? Dwight Yoakam, John, guys, John Campbell. Party, Brett Young. I yeah. mean, bro, the list goes on and on and on. And then with the Northeast, it's there's this appreciation because we don't get a lot of it. Yeah, you know, we don't get there's. We don't get Muscadine Bloodline coming up to the Northeast. This was their first West Coast tour they've ever done. You know, yeah. like. A lot of acts don't go out that far. Yeah, I think, you know, honestly, at the end of the day, a lot of it does come down to money. Like, can you afford to get the bus there and back? <laughs> yeah. Like, how many shows can you play? How big are the venues? Can we get, can we make our investment back? But I do think there's country music fans everywhere. Oh, yeah. Agreed. California now is becoming, in the last 15 years, I would say, a very profitable move for artists. So it wasn't that, you know, artists from Nashville didn't want to go to California. I just didn't think you know, maybe labels and think it was a great business move. And now there's so many venues and there's such an explosion of country music out there and artists that are coming from California, representing California, that uh, people are showing up and buying hard tickets. So the investment on getting there and doing shows and doing runs there is well worth it. Yeah, there's two artists from California that are coming up right now. And they're, they're baby acts. They're, they're kids that are playing a lot of our rounds and stuff. Mm -hmm. A kid named Carson Wallace. Okay. Uh, if you're familiar with him yet. Mm -hmm. He goes to Belmont. He's 19, mm -hmm. um, but labels are <laughs> Belmont Google. puts out products, bro. They, they do, man. I mean, just like Carolina puts out products on the basketball court, yeah. Belmont puts Belmont out. Belmont puts out products. And on the, if, the, if the basketball court were country music, they, yeah. Yeah, they put I out mean, products. I mean, Belmont's got a good basketball team, too, yeah, but, they man, do. they crush. They, they crush in country music. Yeah, and then there's a girl named Sam Stone mm -hmm. who's from Los Angeles County, okay. and she's definitely a little, little left of center with her sound where it's very traditional Western, but yeah. it is awesome so nice it's cool to see the action like there's a kid there's a kid coming up right now his name's aiden canfield that's from new york mm -hmm. from, from terry to, or from um where the hell it's westchester he's from okay so like dressed outside the city but he's down here and got a booking deal and a pub deal like it's yeah i just started listening over. to a guy from boston uh northeast logan michael he's oh dude yeah. yeah he's legit man he's awesome i love that kid yeah he saw it i saw him play at cma fest and yeah. he did he did so yeah. this year was my first cma fest not having to work at a bar or I be just on the road met with, with the guy yesterday i had lunch with him for some shit i can't talk about because i probably <laughs> won't get it but um he created the cma fest broadcast really yeah i was like dude you're a legend i mean he did a million things he was telling me about his life and i was like man i gotta get going but um yeah. i was like this dude has done everything under the sun but he they were getting ready to cancel it 
They were getting ready to cancel CMA Fest when it was at the fairgrounds, and then they obviously were they were going to move it um, if they continued it, and people were going to vote on it. So a little fun fact I found out yesterday, I didn't know this, uh, CMA Fest was saved in Los Angeles, California on Sunset Boulevard. No that's where they had shit. the vote, and that's where they had the meeting. <laughs> this guy was like 19 or 20 at the time and said, well, I got an idea. Let's, uh, he, like, he filmed it. He wrote the sizzle for it, and then he sold the idea and the concept of turning it into, all right, we'll film everything at the festival, then we'll turn it into a broadcast. And he he's responsible for saving CMA Fest. So wow. big shout out, Rob Deaton, if you're out there, buddy. And that is a big, like, that is a huge, that's been a huge thing for, for country music. Amazing. Expanding. I think know? he produces it now. I think he's like the main dude. But like, can you imagine someone, hey, what did you do with your life? Oh, I saved CMA Fest. <laughs> like, yo. I was like, check. I, have, I can't compete with that. I, I, put, I put live country music performance like country music's biggest event yeah out of nashville i brought it to the masses on national television yeah that's or a pretty just, cool or just saving it from death like yes. he said they were going to cancel it and then, then then you know he came up with the idea that kind of financially helped keep it alive and then now what what was it like 50 years this year yeah ridiculous yeah 50 50 years and it just gets bigger and bigger every year which is really cool and it's cool to see that there's more and more artists being involved with it. Like yeah. it's not just the 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 artists being ponied around by the labels. Sure, it's a lot of independent acts have places in there. Well, that's changing quite a bit now, stages. which is nice. With I mean, obviously, I work for a streamer, so I'm 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 big on you know giving everybody the light that they need. But it's nice that there's other venues because look, there's there's going to be a place for labels forever, and I think labels are amazing. And if you can get a record deal, I think. It's not for everybody, like you said, but it's still like it does help. Yeah. But it's nice that some of these independents and like like you said, they're getting to play really cool events and they don't have to have that now because there's only so many spots on those on those labels. Yeah. So I go out to California to where do I go to see a country show? Like where's where's where would you you recommend? Because I've done Moonshine Beach and I've done Moonshine Flats. Yeah. San Diego, those are fun. Man, San Diego. I mean, any of the beach towns, like they do, now they do some of those festivals down in Manhattan Beach, Hermosa Beach. Like it's such a cool vibe, um, you know, and it does bring in the element of California. And some of the country artists that come out there, they like, they really start leaning into it. Like you see, instead of the cowboy boots, you'll see them out there in sandals and like they got a cold one, just relaxing. Yeah. And you get to see them in a different light. But you know, guys like Morgan, they're playing L.A. You know what I mean? They're playing crypto, and, like, it's a spectacle. It's it's something, uh, and it's a sight to see. So, I mean, anywhere. But I down on the beach down in Hermosa or anywhere in Orange County, like the House of Blues down in Orange County is pretty dope. Yeah, yeah I they, might have to try to get out because we're trying to hit a lot of festivals. Like, yeah. That's our thing with Ray's Rowdy right now is because yeah. Ray's Rowdy started in, at Country Concert in mm -hmm. Fort Laramie, Ohio, and it was yeah. just a bunch of dudes, like Nikki T being one of them. They call themselves the Rowdy Gentlemen of Leisure, and yeah. they would just get drunk at festivals and just be the folks at the side stage like front row like supporting the up-and-comers and all that yeah so we're trying to get to a lot of festivals so like that's really cool by i want to get i i want to get out i want to do stagecoach and the other one what's the one in washington or oregon watershed oh watershed yeah i want to do those two yeah those watershed like man two. i've never been but the pictures the uh, gorge yeah man the gorge unbelievable i was supposed to see stapleton at the gorge with my oh. pastor of all people shout out mr <laughs> judah smith and uh something that's happened awesome. i think stapleton had like vocal issues and he canceled it or something like this a couple years ago. Yeah. Yeah, that place I remember seeing the video seeing um Hardy puts out some of the best tour content. Yeah, buddy, him and Tanner, they have great system. That guy's another guy's got a yes. future. Yeah, oh yeah. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. He walks wild. around with a printing press, I would imagine. Yeah, it's wild. Um, but watching, I think they put up a, a clip and it's like they have like a driving range there, and you just hit fuck you just hit golf balls just off into the gorge. Yeah, that's and amazing. that's like one of the amenities that's there. Yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah, it'd be cool to be cool to check that out. So, what do you have like coming up? And talk a little bit about about your show that you've got. It's over. It's on Amp, Amazon. Which is, yeah, which it's on Amazon. Amp. Yeah, so Amazon Music is launching its own radio platform. Sick. And um, I used to work for Spotify, and before that, I did a, a TV show with Travis Tritt, and Shania Twain, and Jake Owen here in Nashville called Real Country. So, oh like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember seeing that. That yeah, was a few so years back. Yeah. Larry Fleet was one of the contestants on it. Tierra was one of the contest. I was the host, so so it was it was really cool, but. Amazon approached me about helping build out the arm of their, their country branch of this yeah. radio platform. And so now I just do a daily morning show. Check out AMP. It's, uh, we have everybody from Kip and Brett and Brothers Osborne and like all the Laney and all these acts that you know and love. But then we also have, uh, you know, we had a kid named Landon Wall on the other oh, day, Landon. Matt Schuster. Yeah, oh, we I know love. Matty. Yeah. yeah, I love Matt, man. His voice is ridiculous. Yep. It's, it's ridiculous. And he's still figuring it out yeah which is what's crazy he's so yeah. good right now and he's still figuring out what's it like going from 
doing the terrestrial morning show where it's like a clock set up yeah. and you're you're thrown into traffic and and the weather and you're doing the the callers and the this and the that what's it like doing that for a streamer man i loved you know shout out go country 105 and entire southern california country community i loved it i mean it was my first job in radio i had never done radio i didn't study radio i just got put on the radio yeah. and so i know everybody in the radio business hates me so like you you didn't start in like Salina, Texas. Yeah. I'm like, nah. Uh, yeah, I just started in Los Angeles. And so I have nothing but amazing things to say about the whole team there and country radio in it in itself. But it is really cool and really fun because I would go to these music meetings and I worked for someone who whose family, the, the station out there was privately owned. So the the family kind of like family tree ran everything. Yeah. And so you would make recommendations, but I didn't have any real power. I mean, I could make some suggestions and some of those worked out heavily in, in my benefit. So when Chris Stapleton was going around and people weren't playing Chris Stapleton, I was heavy on, we had a dinner and Chris Stapleton's team was there and I was leaning in heavy about, Oh, I think Chris Stapleton's going to be the biggest thing in country music. Like, dude, this is working yeah. like right now. Like it's happening. Well, this was in like 2000, this was before the CMA thing with, with Luke, with, no, with uh, Luke. Justin Timberlake. Oh, just when, oh, he, when yeah, he blew yeah. up, this was before that. So what was the song that was... What are you, uh, what are you listening to? Oh, he shopped that okay, as a yeah. single. Nobody would play it. And so um, I don't think they were shopping that single at the time, but he was going around meeting people and stuff. And uh, yeah, I sat at that dinner. I was just like, yo, I think this guy... I had heard him with the steel drivers, so I was familiar. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, whatever. It, it works out. Your bosses go a different direction. It happens. Yeah. But... That doesn't happen with my show at this moment in time. There's a freedom to book whoever I want, to play whatever I want. And so that has been a really cool thing to be able to shed light on stories that probably would have got turned down at my old job. Like, oh, well, you know, this they don't have any charting songs yet. I'm like, yeah, that's the cool part about it. Like, we'll get in early. You know, yeah. everybody wants to buy Apple stock now. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? So like um, I loved my job there. I loved the people. It was really cool being a part of a community. Like you get up and you tell funny stories about what you did. And I'm, I'm really self-deprecating. So I'll just make fun of myself yeah, all the time. Same. <laughs> and, uh, I think that puts people at ease. We're like, Oh, well this guy don't take himself too seriously. And so you yeah. get to go to local events and people, you feel innately like you have friends yeah. in the community. Yeah. Weirdest radio event you did. Cause I know we've all done as personalities. Like I did some interesting ones back home. In Give me an example of, of, of like, weird. like an, like an appearance or, or like mm -hmm. or like a remote or like where you're just at i guess you're in you're in really like major major markets so yeah. it's probably a little different la i was in like market 42 43 okay. in like central new jersey okay yeah that so like, i would imagine I would you get, saw some things like i we had an am like i'd go out with and i was also doing the promotion stuff okay so i was a street teamer for part of it that's yeah. how i got my start like we would go to like like semi-pro wrestling things, and I watched Tommy Dreamer hit some guy with a trash can. That's amazing. Like, like yeah. and all all for ten dollars an hour sitting yeah. on my boss's couch because I loved it. Like, I'm probably gonna get in trouble for this because me and this gentleman don't get along anymore. I guess we're fine, but we I had a guy that I worked with, and to his credit, he worked really hard uh, in regards to the street team stuff. Yeah, he loved that stuff. So he was kind of the producer slash co-host, but. Um, Eventually, yeah, definitely the co-host. But he started out as the producer. And I'll give him his credit. He did all of that. And he loved it, though. So I didn't have to go to any of those things. I, I would go to anything they asked me to, of course. Like, yeah. I'm not well, too cool uh, for nothing. But, but also a ta talent fees are nice. Yeah. They'll hit you with them talent fees. At I least they did back in Jersey. handsomely yeah, for my job. Yeah, you're in L.A., bro. Yeah, I was, I, you know, I told the story not too long ago with somebody at dinner. I was bartending and... Um, landscaping, and so when I went to interview for the job, I had no idea. I'd never done radio. I never, I had no idea what people from radio got paid. And I'm thinking, all right, if they offer me forty grand, I'm in. And the agent that sent me in on it was my modeling agent. So I'm like, he don't know what he doesn't know what these people make. We have no idea. <laughs> yeah. And um, push comes to shove, you know, I get the call. They're like, yeah, they're gonna make an offer. They loved you. I'm like, oh, amazing, incredible. Um, and in my mind, I'm thinking if they pay me 40 grand, I'll be able to bartend less and I probably can stop mowing lawns. And it'll be a cool job. I can talk about country yeah. music. And, and I love fun. country music. Yeah. And I'm from North Carolina. And like it, my parents can listen to me and it'll make me a little bit closer with my family. It'll be, it'll be super dope. They came back and <laughs> it was like, yeah, I'll never forget. This is a true story. I, I was sitting in my buddy's living room. My agent, I was like, oh, my agent's calling. My agent's calling. My agent, my modeling agent. He's not a real agent. <laughs> And uh, he goes, well, they uh, they made an offer, 
But I'll be honest with you, it was a little low. We we honestly we we had to turn it down. And I was like, okay, okay, but w- what does that mean? Like, is the process over? Like, what was the offer? And he was like, oh, they offered a hundred k. I was like, yo, where are you at? Because I will drive <laughs> to you right now and kill you. Like I was, just, and it worked out. They knew what they were doing, and, yeah. and luckily he had passed it on to a guy in the agency that had dealt with uh, audio space, and so it worked out really well. Where. I did not have to do or need to do. And it was a really cool thing to allow the producer of our show who chimed in and like, he became a part of the show. He did a lot of that stuff and he really liked it. He yeah. really enjoyed it. So I was like, Oh cool, man, you do yeah. that and I'll do the other stuff. And yeah. Yeah. So I didn't, I didn't have a lot of weird encounters cause like in LA, I don't know. We just didn't have a lot of stuff like that, I guess. Yeah. Where do you think the, um, the homeless population's worse LA or Nashville? Cause it's pretty bad here. Yeah. So I haven't encountered it in Nashville. I haven't been here long enough. We got to get you to, it's, to hermitage, bro. I hate we got that a village even, out there. Yeah. I hate that. It's even a conversation. It's pretty bad in LA. Uh, I live in studio city and I love studio city, but it's, it's becoming an issue. It's becoming a problem. And I don't, I don't know what the answer is, but man, it's, cause it's over. Cause it's, it's like, I remember being in San Diego and this was 2017. I mean, I if I was say. homeless, I'd want to live in LA. I that's don't know what about I'm here. Saying. I, it makes sense. Why the, why would be yeah. like, or Florida, I'd sleep on the beach. Like that storm that came through yesterday. You don't want that. You don't want no. that shit. <laughs> yeah. I got stuck in that. I was sitting out, I was sitting in actually sitting in Kip's truck being like, when is this going to stop raining? Cause I had to run to the studio. <laughs> I was like, I, you don't see this in LA. You don't see that crazy thunderstorm out of nowhere yeah what's the what was it had to be different the weather for you going out that way huh yeah i mean i love that you know you can have i have a very basic sense of style i wear the same stuff every day but in, in california you get away with it people are like oh that guy must be important he looks like trash <laughs> like you know he, he's not dressed at all that guy's like gotta be rich uh you know when you go somewhere like nashville where i would imagine you guys have all four seasons and weather you, the the wardrobe gets extensive. I don't really like having those choices. I'm like, what T-shirt do I? I'll wear this T-shirt today. Perfect. <laughs> I'll wear this ball cap. Yeah, I'll wear yeah. this pair of jeans. Yeah, I'll throw I don't, on these I don't mix it up too much. That's cool. Yeah, I want to I want to get out to Cali some more. I want to get out and check it out. And then I want to check great. out. I hear Arizona's a lot of fun, too. I've been to Arizona West a few places. times on golf trips. I'm not great at golf, but it, it's been great. I'm not either, but I love going and doing it. People, to be said hey, for it. people in Arizona love their lives. They're there for a reason. They're yeah. lifers. That's where the New York Witness Protection people are, Oh, too. really? Yeah, that's like, nice. like, like, in, uh, like Goodfellas. Yeah. Where at the end of Goodfellas, when they send Ray Liotta out, yeah. he's, he's in Arizona. Yeah, shout you know? out and so, big, rest in peace, Ray Liotta. Y- yeah, um, where uh, where's some spots? you like going to here like are you uh you don't sound like too much of a broadway guy i'm not a broadway guy and again uh, this is like a, a crazy name drop but usually i'm i'm if i'm here i'm with artists yeah and so artists innately hate broadway they don't and le- except for a few really there are a few that love it i heard chris young loves broadway or loves midtown chris young loves midtown yeah morgan wallen loves broadway does he really yeah i, I mean you've seen the yeah i haven't talked i mean morgan and he i can- are like we're we're Instagram friends like yes. we'll exchange messages on Instagram. Yeah. I haven't called Morgan in probably two years. Yeah, but um, yeah, that's awesome. If I was even now, even knowing Morgan, if I saw Morgan out on Broadway, I'd be like, "This was such a great night." Yeah, but it's just like some because some folks love the chaos of Broadway. Yeah, Kip like, is not yeah, one of those like guys. Trey Trey Lewis, he's just celebrated 16 years of sobriety. He doesn't drink, smoke, nothing. Completely straight. Yeah, straight edge. Um, he goes out to Broadway all the time. Really? And the reason he likes it is because yeah. when you're in Midtown, you have to talk business. You're mm. seeing other artists, mm. other writers, folks that know who you are. Trey goes down to Broadway. It's a little different for a guy like Morgan. Trey goes down to Broadway. Nobody knows who he is. He can just go down there, yeah. get silly, watch tourists do drunk shit, yeah. and like be around the cover band music stuff. I struggle with the crowd. It's just so crowded. Oh, it's not. It's so crowded. Especially and right now. Right now is busy season from yeah. St. Patrick's Day to about – so a little bit before Halloween, till about like Labor Day, maybe a little bit after Labor Day, that's our busy season. It yeah. slows down in between there. I had a bunch of college, buddy, college buddies from App State. We we had like a, a guys weekend last weekend because I was in town, and we went out to Broadway one night. We didn't make it back to Broadway the rest of the yeah, time. Where'd we you guys go? Whiskey Row. And yeah, then that's we, where I was. Yeah, that's yeah. where I worked. And my buddy walked in. He had like a buck knife this big on his head. They were like, oh, <laughs> the crazy thing was, like, oh, no, we'll just put it in the bucket. You come back tomorrow and get it. I was like, man, this is definitely yeah. new to me. I thought yeah. they would take this guy to yeah. jail. 2019, it was spring of 2019. It was the NWTF, the turkey hunting convention. Okay. It, it's always here in Nashville now. And that week, 
we collected so yeah. <laughs> many fucking knives. Smith, we had to go back is, and get it. And it was in the bucket. He was yeah. like, yo, that knife was like $400. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, we'll go back that, and get that it. That NWTF one, if they were leaving some knives, we were getting some new Kershaws, some yeah. new this, some new that. Yeah, you see you see a lot of that. Um, did you, are you like We went a, to the Barstool one, which I guess is not on Broadway, but it's kind of adjacent. It's downtown, yeah. yeah. You know what that building used to be? Which Broadway? I mean uh, the Barstool. Oh, Barstool. Barstool? No, uh. used to be Joe's Crab Shack. Oh, really? What a great repurposing of a Joe's oh, Crab man. Shack, bro! Yeah. Fucking love that. Whoever is in charge of HR over at the Barstool place, well done. Well done on the hiring of there. They're good, good folks. <laughs> man, yes, they were the the waitresses there. Super nice, amazing. Yeah, yeah very cool. Yeah, it's the um, the bar. What's the what was the thing Tommy Smokes used to do? Their barstool smokes or whatever. Oh yeah, I don't know. Because yeah, it's that was another thing too. I had buddies come down to visit, and mm-hmm. they were like, "Dude, how do you how do you keep like how are how are, how are you friends just mm-hmm. friends and not trying to sleep with all these beautiful women that you're working with?" And I'm like, "Because it's just like being in like like yeah. working a restaurant, you know, working yeah, at a bar. Yeah. It's like a family." Yeah, for sure. It's like a family, and I was doing security, so I wasn't behind the bar, but I was friends with all the folks behind the bar and all of the course. servers and all that. But Nashville does have that vibe, like L.A. or New York or Miami mm-hmm. or like Scottsdale. I or mean, Nashville's Austin. got everything here now, like sports, pro sports teams, like good college teams. I mean, there's soccer here now. Yeah. Oh, there's everything. Dude, there's- soccer games are wild. Yeah. I've, and I've heard Predator games are like something that you have to go oh, to. Bro, like they're it's amazing. Fun. Next, if you're in town in the fall, we will get you. Yeah. We go to a lot. We go to quite a few Preds games. Yeah. Um, we like going to those. They get um because when the crowd's chanting, you got to think. Everybody here fucking harmonizes. It's all music people. Yeah. Like they sing the national anthem. Yeah. You have twenty thousand people singing it in perfect unison here. Did you see where Stapleton released his version of oh, the I love national that he anthem? Did that. That's I love amazing, that he did that. man. Talk about a cool dude. That's a baller move, man. Too. Come on. That's a. I know. I had an iconic generational yeah. moment. Here I you know go. That this. You're will, welcome. I know that this Super Bowl, the Super Bowl um, anthem, is going to be getting replayed for years to come Forever. for the good way, not the not because there's some anthems that are really bad that yeah. we remember. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying. I'm drawing a blank on the young lady's name that did it at like the Warriors game. And yeah, it just did not go well. Yeah, Black Eyed Peas uh, singer. Yeah, so uh, Fergie. Yeah, Fergie had a had a. a, a tough I remember. One. I remember. I was working in adult contemporary radio when that happened. We yeah. talked about it all morning. Yeah, that's tough. <laughs> that was tough. Yeah. Um, what's your What's your basketball team as far as pro stuff goes? Are you just such a college guy that yeah. the NBA is? I mean, I follow different. players in the NBA. Uh, my favorite player is Kevin Durant, which I know he gets a he gets a bad rap, but I got a chance to play a summer on a summer league team with him. So yeah, like, he's a we, freak. He's a freak. We bro. became buddies and like he's a super nice guy so like wherever he goes that's kind of who i cheer for i grew up a lakers fan because the lakers were on television so like when you're a kid you just cheer for whoever you see on tv yeah and so uh, being in la it's cool to see the lakers and, and hopefully the lakers will continue to do well it's been been a tough couple years but yeah whoever kevin plays for that's who i cheer for yeah so now it's it's in uh it's phoenix, phoenix right yeah which is wild. I mean, his because he's how old now? He's in his mid thirties. Yeah, he's like thirty four, maybe. Yeah, and he's still just yeah, dominant. He, if he can stay healthy, I mean, he can string together some good years. I think he'll go down. You know, his legacy. He'll be a top twenty player, maybe a top fifteen imagine, player. Imagine if Greg Oden had panned out. Greg Oden was so fucking good at Ohio State. He was. My, <laughs> imagine people in that draft class going, Mike Conley's going to have a better pro career than Greg Oden, and they're like, "You're crazy." <laughs> But it, that's how it is. Yeah, I mean, think? Mike Conley was the highest paid player in the NBA for about six months. Yeah. That's bananas. Yeah, with the uh, with the Grizzlies, right? Yeah. yeah with yeah, with a smaller market team, too. Yeah. Which is pretty wild. What do you, what's how how big is the hype for this seven foot five kid? This uh Victor Woman Yama yeah, or whatever. Victor, yeah, the hype is which one of my high school teammates is an assistant coach with the Spurs, so he's really, really pumped. Um uh, but yes, yeah, it's, it's as big as anything we've ever seen. I mean, it's as big as Kareem Abdul Jabbar. It's as big, if not bigger, than what LeBron was. Like the hype is Yao Ming. Yeah, it's it's as big as we've ever seen for any prospect ever. Yeah. It's so we'll see. I'm hoping he. I mean, you're seven five. You definitely got got that got that height advantage. But he's just so skinny. It's just so young. Yeah, I hope he does not get injured. We'll see. Yeah, that's the problem with the big the big boys. I mean, that but was yeah, the problem. league's not as physical anymore. No, so we'll, it's a yeah. shoot. It's a shooter's league, yeah, and he seems like he's a shooter. Yeah, I don't think he's gonna play in the paint much. So yeah, and we'll then, see. And then how will Carolina be this year? I mean. I think it comes down to coaching. Obviously, they had a ton of talent last year, and it was not fun to watch. Um, not going to say anything negative about Caleb Love, but I think 
for him and for the program. He's now gone. He's in Arizona. So uh, I think hopefully it works out for him. I think the team will be better. In college, chemistry really, really matters. They're kids. And they had chemistry issues last year. So you return four out of five starters from a national title run and you don't make the tournament. Then you got to start looking at the coaches. So we have the same coaches. So we'll see. Uh, I like Hubert Davis, but I think he's got a lot to prove this year. Yeah, it's cool when you have the legacies and the coaching. And, yeah, and like just I just want to win games though. So you get me the best yeah. coach. I don't care if he got a degree from the university. If he's good with kids and there's no funny business going on, like that's I just want I just want to win. Yeah, I feel I feel that. That's how I feel about about the Yankees, man. Yeah. Like, well, I'm a, how I'm the a Yankees Yankee. gonna do? We're doing good. We saw doing, a perfect game the other day. Yeah, we had a f- perfect game from the guy. 14th all-time, right? Is that tw- right? 24th all-time, oh, okay. fourth for the Yankees. Okay. All four guys to throw a perfect game for the Yankees. All Their first names all start with the letter D. You have Don Larson, David Wells, David Cohn, and now Domingo Herman. Yeah. And all four times that the Yankees have done it, they have won the World Series. But yeah. we've also won a lot of World Series, and yeah. it's been a long time it's been since a minute, we were doing but, that. But you, what are you, the, do you have 26 or 27 right now? 27 right yeah, now. Yeah, 27. Right. 27. I've been... A, I've been I remember I've been coherent for two of them, but like because the nineties <laughs> once because the nineties once I was a baby. Like I was yeah. born ninety five. So yeah. I don't remember I can't say that I remember the nineteen ninety six World Series. Yeah, of course. No. But I was technically alive for them. But yeah. I mean, they're like ten games over five hundred and ten games back and then third place in the division. Every team in the division has a winning record. Yeah, it's that's crazy. That's bananas. I wonder when the last time that happened. Yeah, it's well we'll see if it has the whole year, yeah. but it's but it's wild. And then you have like that's what's interesting about baseball is you you don't have the salary cap, but then you have a team like Tampa Bay whose mm-hmm. entire salary is about what Aaron Judge is getting paid. Yeah. Per year. Moneyball. Yeah, Atlanta, money ball, Oakland, like it's money ball. Yeah, like it's just it's wild to see that. And then like you have these big markets that dominate, but then it doesn't translate like the NBA, like the Knicks can't fucking get it together. Like it has been so I want to see you guys the might New York get Dame Knicks. though. That would be so cool. I want to see the Knicks do well because when it's like New York, like baseball, we're divided. We have the Yankees and yeah. the Nets. Hockey, you're divided. You got the the Rangers, the Islanders. You throw the Devils in there. Technically, you have the Nets for basketball, and then mm-hmm. like football, you have the Giants and the yeah, Jets. Yeah, the Nets don't rival. The Nets, the Nets aren't the Knicks. Like I, I really wish I could have grown up in the '90s for yeah. Woodstock '99, for yeah. Butt Rock, for the the prime era of East Coast rap, for prime golden era of country music, yeah. all that cool shit. But to see the Knicks, like, Rock Rock had a good run in the '90s, <laughs> like yeah. Pearl Jam, Nirvana. Uh, Bro, like, we, man. we're big butt rock guys at Rage Rowdy. Yeah. I don't know if you're familiar with, with what the term butt rock is. No. So it's when you had radio stations like 95.9 The Rat, nothing but rock. Oh, okay. So it's rock. It's like it's Creed. Okay. Limp Biscuit, mm-hmm. Hindered, Three Doors Down, Nickelback, like that yeah. style of stuff. We do a night at Live Oak mm-hmm. um, twice a year, I think. We're going to do one in the fall. We get a like a Broadway band that's mm-hmm. like the house band, yeah. and then we get different country artists to hop up and sing covers yeah. of the 2000s rock songs. Oh, that's awesome, yeah. Which is fun. Because I just saw Nickelback the other day. Oh, yeah. Um, or up at um, Tailgate and Tallboys. They were good. They had a lot of technical issues, mm-hmm. but they were after Jelly Roll. Mm-hmm. And it is so hard to follow Jelly Roll, bro. Yeah. Have you seen Jelly Live yet? Never seen Jelly Live. It's it's like you go you you, re, you reference your uh, your pastor like going to church yeah it to me was like a religious like jelly I've never really? seen one man have that much control over a crowd that big because it was about thirty five thousand up there mm-hmm. now didn't he festival. start out as a rapper he started out he started out as a drug dealer um, right and yeah. then he was he did the did the rap thing and yeah. was like came up with Yellow Wolf and Struggle Jennings and yeah. a lot of folks in the like three six mafia the, the southern rap community yeah um, and then. During COVID, he put out that um, he was like, "We can't. Well, we got to keep doing stuff." So mm-hmm. he put up that "Save Me" video, yeah, and that yeah, that song like, was amazing. We're like, "Oh shit!" He can now Laney's sing. on it, right? Yep. Now they they recut because he's over at BBR with yeah. uh, with Laney, mm-hmm. and so I mean, but people don't know like he and he's worked very hard to get his vocals to where they're at. And yeah, he's got an incredible team around him, and he everybody I know that knows him, they speak highly of him. Dude, so I don't I don't know him. Jelly, uh, I know we've exchanged some <laughs> Instagram messages, and but everybody that I know that knows him says that he's the man so yeah. congrats on all your success brother yeah his show is fucking nuts they said there's a, a documentary i think yeah it's out. on hulu yeah and supposedly it's incredible very powerful oh, okay I gotta and as, as a media guy you'd appreciate that they, they as a me- am i a media guy i think so i don't know what i am you're like hey we're gonna talk about you being a personality i was like i don't really feel like you're i'm a personality a per- you're i don't know what i am i'm a country music yeah, fan yeah, if that, someone that, asked you what do you do what do, what do you say 
man, probably steal money from Amazon. <laughs> they're, like, they're like paying me to play country music. Um, Somebody, if Amazon's the, watching be, this, be, just, Bezo, I'm underpaid. Just be, kidding. Be, be, Bezos has a, Bezos has enough. He can. He needs somebody to. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think I register on Bezos's <laughs> monitor, which is funny. Uh, it, it, I'm not going to say the name, but when I got hired, one of my friends, uh, he reached out. He's like, oh, I know. And I know he does. He was like, oh, I, I told Jeff he hired someone really good. I was like, bro, <laughs> Jeff has no idea that I work for Amazon. Stop I'm it. about yeah. 35, yeah. 40, maybe 50 the people away from him. The fact that he said that, I was just like, dude, you don't – yeah, just 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 don't say that stuff. Okay, well, we'll we can play this game. Who's the high, most high-profile person you think in your phone? <sighs> Man. Well, that's like a double-edged sword. Wild. Yeah, that's a double-edged like, sword because – I feel like there would be something – like somebody wild, like one of the people from Shark Tank or something. Like I feel like you what would industry? you would have Cuban, what industry? Yeah, I'm I'm very, listen. This is gonna and sound you're not terrible. A, and you're not a name dropping guy at all. I, don't I get try that not to you. be. No. I try because that's a, no one cares. You yeah. know what I mean. And honestly, it's a wonderful thing. But I am the grenade of all of my friends. I'm like, man, all of my friends are super successful, and I'm still well, like, trying to figure it out. They say that with writers when they come to town. Be the be the weakest writer. In the I room. am the be, weakest link of all the, of my friends. Try to be the dumbest guy in the room. Like surround yourself like you are the company that you keep, and like learn try to I learn have, from folks around you. I and, have done that. I ha- and it has not panned out quite yet. So hopefully something really dope will happen. But yeah, I've, I've been very blessed to be in rooms and be around people that are doing like otherworldly type okay, stuff. Okay, so like a biz- like a like a business person, probably Scooter like- Braun. No shit. Yeah. So I'm rep by SB Projects. I've known Scooter since I'm 20. Really? Yeah. How do you, how do you meet him? Um, he was friends with Jay Will from Duke. And so, I, you know, Jay Will and I were workout partners. Like, I would train at Duke, and Jay would, like, crash at my house. I had a house in Raleigh in the summers, and, like, Scooter was just always around. And he's a good dude. So yeah. we became friends back then. And when I got the TV gig for NBC – uh, he, his company signed me to a talent deal. And so like, we had never done business before. And again, it's like, I'm several <laughs> rungs removed from being like a day to day with scooter, but like I coach his kids in basketball. Like I go to his house for Thanksgiving. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. He's like family to me. He's, he's, he's the best. Like yeah. I forget people's reaction. Like he's, this is how cool scooter is. Uh, I got asked to host stagecoach. And so scooter loves country music. He obviously owns big machine and, uh, he has a house down at the Indio polo fields and he walked over and you know he goes to stagecoach every year well he was like hey where, where where's your set like where are you hosting from and i told him and he was like all right well if you get time come say hello we're gonna be like in, off to the right like we're gonna go watch uh i think jackson dean is one of the yeah, guys he has fantastic insane good. Love Love. jackson yeah man he can do no wrong so but scooter went out of his way uh luke bryan was headlining night one and luke and scooter are like really close they're they're good buds and so he's like, man, uh, are you going to be doing the Luke interview? And I said, yeah, I'll be over here. There's going to be a few of us, but I'll be, you know, I'll be sitting next to Luke. So he walks over, and I just the reaction of people to Scooter and then obviously to Luke Bryan, and they just pulled me aside, and it's like me and these two just chopping it up before I did the interview. So it looked like I was, you know, homies with Luke Bryan, but it's only <laughs> because I was hanging with Scooter, and he kind of like yeah. greased the wheels. And, and a couple years ago, I wasn't working, and – uh, Scooter and I were at Stagecoach, and I was on the bus with Luke, and he, nobody wanted to drink. So he was like, well, bad news. You have no choice. You are not allowed to say no. So, like, I did a ton of tequila shots with him, and he he remembered. He was like, hey, you were the one that helped me get ready to headline Stagecoach. <laughs> and I was like, I'm glad one of us remembers that because that was painful for me, man. He was oh, like, yeah. oh, that's funny. That's awesome, man. But, yeah, Scooter would yeah. probably be the biggest. Oh, yeah. yeah. What What is Coach Graham like coaching basketball? I think Coach Graham is just like uh, friend Graham. Very encouraging. Don't focus on the negatives. Yeah. Like if it's corrective, it's like, hey, this would be better if we do it this way. And I mean, who doesn't want to be friends with someone that's like positive? Like, yes. I, don't, I don't think I'd be a good coach because I would have a hard time reprimanding people. Yeah. Po- well, you say like coach. Like, how old are the kids that like, you're coaching? Like you well, coach like, like eight. Active. Oh, so oh, you're his coaching kids. like kids. Yeah, they're just okay. out there to have fun. Like yeah. when he's you know the, you're not AAU ball. Yeah. Coaching the first or time he asked me to come over there, he's like, hey, do you think you you know my son loves basketball and his son does love basketball and his son's got some talent. Like I think if he ends up loving. Basketball, he's he's got a chance. Scooter's a really good basketball player. I don't know if, if really, he, yeah, man, he's got a ratchet on him. Yeah, really? he's from Connecticut. Like he played in the Jersey AAU circuit. All oh, that. Oh, okay. yeah, he's he's yeah. got a he's got a gun on him. Like he, 
he can fire that thing. But his son has some real natural talent. So he was like, hey, you know, he's starting to really pick it up, and we're starting. This is going to be like the first year he's doing, you know, kids league where he's playing in real games where you come over and kind of like get the mechanics right so he learns the right way and we don't have to go back. And I went over there. I was like, man, there's no teaching him mechanics. He, he's too young for it right now. And he was like, all right, well, just have fun. You know, like go out there and have fun. It's, it's cool for him to think he has a coach. And it, and it is because he'll call me coach and everything. So yeah. it's, it's, it's cool. And he's a great dad. And, like, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, have you balled up with anybody here in town? Yeah, so I'm in a standing run with a bunch of artists out here. Like we played last time I was here, I was at Kane's house. You ever yeah, heard I've about heard, that run? I've heard very much about the the legendary games at Kane Brown's okay. establishment. So who have you spoken to? I'm trying to think if I've played with any I've, of Do you know well, anybody that well, plays I know, in them? Well, I know Skis is I don't know if Skis has been over there or not. Well, I connected the, did you see that post I did with Skis with the yes. handshake? Yeah. I love Skis. Yeah, if skis, anybody's listened to this, yeah, he's skis, one of my favorite humans skis ever. Skis has been on the pod. I have smoked many of cigarettes with Skis. Um I think he's, he's got a, a new song out today. Yep. yep um, Happy to be here. He, you gotta uh, stream that thing. Yes, we we love we love skis. He's a um, legend. He's what we call a purebred hoss cat papers yeah. and all like that man is just you walk it's, he's a vibe he's great super positive just fun to be around but i know skis has mentioned about that um matt stell we uh, we had heard i saw you comment he, I on, commented that story on that yeah on, on, on the tales from the front row with nikki t and kurt ozon yeah um mitch wall our buddy mitch wallace who um does a lot of content stuff with trey does yeah. a lot of kane's content stuff as well so like i've heard from like i've just heard from him that like they get really intense over I'll, well, the basketball I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at it's this. a good game you can ask anybody I, I won't say how i did you can ask anybody that plays in that run about it. but I've, I've played in it for years now you can ask them when i show up in town how that goes down how often do you guys play like, they used to play a play, ton like, did you play on this run while you were out while you were out at no, you were in town I or? didn't play this this time because uh, I'm not sure if anyone played this this week. But yeah. they were playing like once or twice a week at, over at Ashley Gorley's at first, and then then they moved over to Kane's. Kane built like an unbelievable. He's like, we're gonna do this at my house. But I think he picked up <laughs> golf so much now. He's got like a golf simulator, so I think everybody they have golf nights now. Yeah, and the way that the world is back from where it was a few years ago. Yeah, we had a lot of time on our hands in 2020. It and was a great run. I mean, the guys from Lanco played. Um, Let's see. Sam Hunt was playing. Oh, I hear Sam Hunt can ball. Yeah, he can. I ball. hear Sam can shoot. He's an athlete. Then, you know, He's an athlete. then Noah West. He yeah, can Noah, shoot. Noah's my Noah's, guy. Noah's a good friend of ours I, I too. I love known Noah. Him, known him for a long time. Yeah, he's great. He can he can flat out stroke it. Yeah, you you can, you can ask Noah though. He'll be able to tell. So those you. are some competitive games then. If you guys are. Yeah, it was good. It was good. Yeah, it was good. I took Scooter out there. So I took Scooter one year. Oh, really? Yeah, Scooter's played in that. He did well. He's and he held, he held his own? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Scooter's good. Like, he don't mess around, and he's competitive, so, like, he don't back down oh, from so nothing. Oh, so he plays defense. Yeah, he don't back down from nothing. Who, does, who doesn't play defense on country, in country music basketball? Let me see. Like, is there somebody that you're like, okay, cool, this guy's guarding me. I got this. Nah, I mean, like you said, it was competitive, and uh, you know, people wanted to win, and they do talk a lot of trash. Oh, I'm sure. Jackie Lee doesn't play a lot of defense. Jackie Lee, if you're listening to this. <laughs> do you, do you, are you familiar with I'm Jackie Lee? Yeah, man. Um, rumor is he's got some new music coming out, and I think he's one. I've seen him play rounds and all the you know all over the place. I, I saw him play at the listening room last week. He's one of the most talented guys uh, that I think you know. I hope people are made aware of like what he's doing because I think he's got what it takes to stick. You know, hell yeah. What was his? He had a big. He had a big one back in the day, right? Yeah, getting over you. I getting think. over you. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So that one. That one crushed. But I think, uh, and I've heard good things. I haven't heard everything, but I've heard good things from people uh, over at Make Wake. Yes, that he's got like some bangers in his back pocket. Yeah, I'm Make like, Wake. That's that's family to us. They have dude. The roster over there right now is just growing. Well, I think he's on that roster yep. now. Yeah, and he's so, over there. So is, yeah, the guy us. that I was talking to doesn't hold his words very much. He's told me before. He's like, man, we're sending you something to listen to. We're not on it, but you give us your feedback. And so I know when he says he likes something, I'll, I was like, oh, all right. And so he's he was highly complimentary of whatever they got going on over there. So I'm, I'm excited to hear it. I haven't heard it yet, but I'm looking forward to That's it. That's awesome. Yeah, because they've got Colby Acuff over there now. Mm -hmm. They've got Keller Cox over there. they got the Flatland folks. Yeah, I heard uh, Colby's going to catch a big break next year. That, well, I'll just put that rumor out there. Yeah, I heard, I heard I, things are yeah, coming Colby, up for him. Colby's uh, very, very involved in the Rays Rowdy family. We love Colby. Yeah. Very well, then much. you probably already know. Say congratulations yeah. yes. on this 2024, yeah. man. Yes. <laughs> oh yeah, we know we know we know he's got a big we yeah. know old Colby's got a big year ahead of him. Because yeah. the first time he ever came to Nat first trip he ever came to Nashville was because Nikki T asked him to play 
at Live Oak. Oh, he really? was like, I never want to, I don't want to come to Nashville mm-hmm. until I get invited to come to Nashville. Mm. He's from Idaho. And yeah, I don't, I don't I'm not you know, talented enough for I that. You know, I, I you was knocking Colby, on the door of yeah, Nashville, like, yo, that's yo, how yo I let was me too. in. That's yeah. how I was too. Do you know, um, have you met Colby? And I have, but I've met his his entire team. Actually, yeah. I met them in uh, LA. And it's so funny because, look, I, I'm poor. I don't have a ton of money. Yeah. And his team was like, hey, you got to come to San Antonio tomorrow. Colby's playing. And I was like, great. Are you flying are you, me are, there? Yeah, you, yeah, are like, you, yeah. What are my accommodations? Yeah. If this like, is like, a formal we're in invite. Northern California at like <laughs> something else. And they're like, you got to come tomorrow to San Antonio. And I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I don't I don't buy just, like, you know, I'm going to get on my jet and I'll go to San Antonio. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Yeah, be like I don't have that, but um, Colby's from from Idaho originally, and okay. he used to guy. He did real estate, and then worked his ass on kids a fucking hustler and he has it yeah. figured out i'm a fan yeah he's great um but he used to guide fly fishing trips like folks oh, that would go up and do those nice. bougie items. he was that guy that would get up i would love take the random job fishing. stories they're the best oh yeah i mean there's a ton of them i mean like charlie moncaster from muscadine he had a big grass cutting mm-hmm. operation down in alabama yeah he lived at lived at auburn didn't go to he went to auburn then didn't go to auburn stayed at auburn to play the gigs but then was just cutting grass you know dustin like, lynch one time one time told me that he was like a waste management like like he would test the the waste in water systems from different animals and stuff. Like he was he would test what he was like a biological like engineer, but he would test going test. around wearing a polo with a little test kit, testing, yeah, testing like, some Yo, bullshit. That's crazy. I mean, so it's really cool to hear people's stories before they, you know, obviously have immense success like yeah. Dustin and uh some of these other guys. Yeah, speaking of artists, um, who are some of your like if you were to give like three folks we you think we should really look out for, like Graham Bun's like well, Jackie Lee's one of them Jackie's for sure. One, yeah. uh, again, or even five. We could do five because I know there's a lot. Yeah, there's a ton. I mean, Matt Schuster is someone that I listen to, but you already know about him. Yeah, I mean, well, he, I'm saying just in general, just oh, yeah. people. I love, yeah, I love what Matt's doing. Logan Michael is also one of my my favorites. I, is May Estes? Is she May Estes, bro? She Estes, is. Is she is she known or is that does yeah, that qualify? So we as had someone her. To look out so we, we had her on the pod a few months ago, and she made her Opry debut recently. And she yeah. you talk about stories. Is of she odd jobs. is she does she qualify as that? Because I love her. I think she's going to be great. That's that's a good pick. That's right? a good that's one. A good one. Okay. That's a good one. I didn't know if she was already too big. No, because most dude. people might know about her. I don't well, know. It's, it's what's interesting too is you get and you you get it by extension being so involved in the industry that you are, even though you're out out in the West Coast. Yeah. You, Am I? I always feel like I'm like I'm no, like you're I don't, you're in it, bro. Yeah, you're in know. it. You're in it. Um, the folks that we hear about that mm-hmm. the industry buzzes about. Yeah, because I'm not in town. Like yeah, you guys hear no, about people a long time before I do. No, but you're still on the phone with with labels, with teams. You're you're working with a big uh, streaming is now what radio was when yeah. you, when you and I were were in it. Yeah. You know, like yeah. it's, it's it's moved over. But like you hear about the buzz of these people. Like I remember hearing about Hardy when I first moved to town because mm-hmm. that was 2018 and that yeah. was short hair singing throwback four by four all that stuff yeah we were rednecker like, man, yeah all that stuff. i loved that ep yeah i did too i did man. too it was awesome there was one other one on yeah. there uh it was throwback four by four rednecker and there was one more that i just absolutely yeah. loved yeah um nowhere to find me yeah here we go yeah, i'm in the woods da, yeah. da, 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 da. um but you hear the buzz about these folks and you get to see them and we're like thinking that they're these huge names but the rest of the country doesn't know about them yet like Someone very close to us, Ella Langley. Yeah, I like, love Ella. She's like our, she's like our little sister. She trays roommate. I and thought like she our would be sis. too big to, you yeah. know, this is why yeah. we fight with the Co Wessel yeah, Jam. Dude, and her streaming Country the Boys Dream Girl. Yeah, yeah. Jam. Her, her, and she's got first of three on that John Party tour that's starting up here in a few weeks. And mm-hmm. that's going to, that is going to, um, that is going to absolutely like crush and change her world. And then like someone like Dylan Marlowe, yeah. who's huge in town and has these big tour slots, but the rest of the country does like, you get to see them pop in town yeah. and like the buzz are here in the scene before they go. So that's one boom. of the cool things for me living in Southern California, I guess having being uh, Nashville adjacent is I yeah. get to hear about people way before the West coast. So I'm like, yeah. people are like, oh, he told me about so and so, which I was probably late to the party, but I was early to the party if I'm in California. Yeah, you know. Yeah, is the Western stuff really popular out there in Cali? When you say Western, what do you I'm mean? I'm talking like like what Colby does, what Tyler Halverson yes. does, what yeah. Flatland Cavalry does, yeah. what um. Well, I think Zach, Zach Bryan. I think Zach Bryan's made that popular all over. It's, that's global. like Western emo. That's a whole different thing, in my opinion. Yeah, but if you're in California. And we'll just say you're a casual country music fan. The the, the subgenres don't really count. Yeah. It's either pop country or traditional sound. Those yeah. are the two things. The the casual country music fan. If you're not a casual country music fan, then you have people's styles that you like, and you dive deeper into that. But yeah. there's that's a more niche 
group of listeners. Yeah, how do you feel about that whole style of stuff? Zach Bryan? You, you're big, you, you're I Zach love Bryan Zach Bryan. Yeah. yeah, he's like bucket list. Morgan and, and Zach and... Uh, it's crazy because Kip is a buddy of mine. Those three, those three albums, like I just uh, on repeat. Like yeah. I, you know, don't stop listening to them. Yeah, I'm wondering how this new one's gonna be because he's self producing it. Yeah, I uh, I know it's gonna be it's gonna be different. It's gonna be very different because he's also only releasing like 14 songs. Yeah, we're, I thought we're, it was gonna be 40. We're getting a single album as opposed to a double or a triple. yeah or a triple. Yeah, <laughs> when Morgan put out a 36 song album, I was like, this is amazing because Zach Bryan's gonna put out 45 now. <laughs> They're just gonna get, yeah, and then Luke's yeah. gonna come out with a 60 song. Yeah, yeah, I was like, oh, for sure he's not he's not doing that. Or then Garth is gonna Garth will come back and say, hey, look out, kids, I'm I'm still in this and put out 60 songs, something yeah. ridiculous, you know? Yeah, yeah it, is, it is crazy to see. But yes, yeah, so he gave four. Would May be your fifth, or who would your fifth be? Or May's your fourth? Did, May was and she qualifies. Yeah, she's okay. very much. Oh yeah, just somebody yeah. that you're like this person. Because I feel like she's really well known though. You know? She's really well known here in town because she's yeah. been busting her ass in town and yeah, playing awesome. rounds and working as a. She worked as a um, as a server forever, bro. Yeah, she, she that makes me grind. love her. her. She worked as a server and had to grind for everything that she has. She moved from a small town and was playing the Texarkana Opry back in Arkansas, mm. and now she's played the Grand Old Opry in Nashville, and she's uh -huh. got a team around her now. And I. Really, she's over in Sweden right now, I think, with Timothy Baker, like doing some bringing country music over to Sweden, which is kind of cool. But yeah, that's dope. I, I think she's gonna, I can't wait. I hope that she gets the commercial success she deserves if she wants that, you know, because some artists don't want the commercial thing. Yeah, I get that too. They uh, want, they want the, they want to be the, the, in the underground. They want to be kings of the underworld, yeah. you know, like Cadillac 3 and Muscadine and folks like that. I just had a conversation with somebody, and it goes back to what you said about Trey going down to Broadway, and they're like, man, you think it's, you know, they, it what they weren't talking to me, and luckily, because I would have felt really uncomfortable had they said this to me. But they're like, "You think it's so cool to like be famous, and it's really sucks, man." He was like, "I can't do anything. Like I go places, and I got to worry about, you know, snapping on somebody or doing, you know, some if I yell at someone or someone wants yeah. my pay their cameras in my face, I can't even react." Like they were making a, a very, a very good case for being famous is not all what it's cracked up to be. Yeah, dude. I mean, you you think about like. Luke Combs used to be at Whiskey Jam every week. Yeah. His life was playing Revival on Tuesdays and then hanging out with Ward and the Whiskey Jam folks on Mondays and Thursdays. Yeah. Like, that's what he what he loved. And mm -hmm. now it's like you, you can't go certain places. Yeah. I have you just heard get mobbed. That, that uh, Luke is the happiest he's ever been, though. So oh, I would agree. I would be happy. It. What yeah. I'm just saying is like you get to like how like it's it, a cha different life. it changes when people know who you are. And yeah. you see it in, in all kinds of in all walks of oh for sure. All walks of life, not just country music. Yeah, the guy that was having this conversation was an actor and he was making the case of like, man, you know, he he hit it big young and he was like dude i can't do like the cool shit that yeah. you guys can do yeah. i can't go to the beach without you know yeah. having coolest an coolest like actor like party experience in hollywood because you've been out there for a while now yeah and my uncle i remember oh, man, telling, there's a few i remember my uncle telling me a story back in the late 90s early 2000s he was living in new york city living in um living in um i think he was on um i forget exactly where in the city but he had one night where he ended up at a house party with zach galifianakis and said it was one of the greatest nights oh, of his that, life yeah well he's a carolina guy yeah he yeah, is yeah i love proud zach. carolina guy yeah he's a big nc state fan yes. you're talking about nc state yeah so is uh bj barn from american yeah. aquarium they're yeah. both big wolf pack guys every time if you see a galifianakis movie he works out some way to make an nc state joke yeah like hey we want you to come like in the hangar we want you to come to this uh Bachelor party. He was like, "What weekend is it?" Because the Jonas Brothers are playing NC State this weekend. I can't go. Yeah, and he <laughs> says the Wolf Pack. Yeah, yeah like yeah. part of the Wolf Pack. I just realized, oh shit. Yeah, yeah. he did, makes the whole Wolf Pack. Yeah, thing. it's awesome. Yeah, yeah. it's hilarious. Uh, I mean, I've had a few. I think that I, I got a chance to go. Michael B. Jordan has become a, a good buddy of mine. No over shit, the years. that's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, and he took me to the Creed premiere this this year, and it's the only time I was, I'd ever been late for work the next day. I was late for work the next day. I, I I got to see how Mike lives, and it was really cool. And he treated me like I was like in the movie or something. It yeah. was great. He's the nicest and most cool, giving, a list celebrity. You know, him and Chris Pratt are both two of the nicest, most famous people on the planet. Type people I've ever been around. Uh, I was Chris Pratt more like Jurassic World Chris Pratt, or is he more like Parks and Rec Chris he's Pratt? A, he's life? right down the middle, a little okay. of both. Yeah, because I liked Andy from Parks and Rec. That was like the introduction. That was my introduction. I'll to Chris tell you off camera, uh, but Chris Pratt one time 
one massive country music fan. Oh yeah, I know he's huge. Yeah, huge, huge in country. the country lifestyle. So that's how we met. We we go to the same church, and one night he was, I guess somebody he was talking about country music. And they're like, oh, you got to meet Graham. He, you know, he's involved with country music. Does the radio station out here, and so he. He came over and introduced himself, and I was like, "Yeah, but, well, yeah, I know who you are, but cool." And so we started talking. Couldn't couldn't have been nicer. And again, I'm not going to reveal the name because it's embarrassing, but I'll tell you off camera. Yeah. He told so he, uh, weeks go by, and uh, he's like, "Man, I want to I want to set you up." With, you know, I wasn't dating anybody at the time. He's like, "I want to set you up. Like, give me your who's your dream girl." <laughs> I'm like, "What do you mean?" He goes, "Any girl on the planet." Just and this is a true story. He goes, "I, I want you to give me what your type is," and. Um, at the time, I think, uh, you know, well, actually, still still now, but I said, uh, Mika Kelly is my type. Okay. Like, I like the girl next door. Friday Night Lights. Yeah. The Derek Jeter disciple, by the way. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of Derek <laughs> yes, Jeter disciples. Um, but that was like an example of someone who I found to be like and crazy beautiful. Yeah. And he's like, all right, cool. I'm a, I'm a, and I'll tell you, again, I'll tell you off camera. He was like, all right, I'm going to make you a deal. This is, and it's kind of fun that he did this. He was like, you know how you always, he can solve a Rubik's Cube like in under a minute. It's like a party trick he does for people. He's like, you know how my mom was visiting me and she came out and she asked, she, we went to his birthday party and she asked him to do it. So he did it. And he was like, you know how you always say that that's so cool? Cause I'd always be like, man, that's so cool. He was like, if you can solve a Rubik's cube in 48 hours, I know the girl that you uh, mentioned, not me and Kelly, but looks like yeah. that. He was like, I know her. I'll call her for you. He was like, well, you got 48 hours to solve this thing. I had never picked up a Rubik's Cube in my life. I'll solve a Rubik's Cube right now in 37 seconds if you put one in front of me. <laughs> and I sent him a video, and I was like, you're up. Hell yeah. And he did. He called He called the girl for me. So uh, big shout out, Mr. Chris Pratt. You're an amazing human being, and I love you. Hell yeah. That's yeah. awesome, dude. Well, man, I appreciate you hanging. We, we kicked yeah. it for a while. and No, thank you and, for having me. Uh, again, I when you asked me, I was like, dude, your your fan base is going to hate you. This is going to be like a toss away. They're not going to want to hear this. No, well, that's what, we, what we're doing with Outside the Round is yeah. getting outside of just having songwriters and artists, which I love having mm -hmm. country artists and songwriters. And that's, sure. that's always going to be the bread and butter, especially being in the Ray's Rowdy family. But having on... Folks that I, well, I want to do my show now, show. dude. I would absolutely love that. Yeah, That'd you be come sick. on, man. We'll figure it out. We'll find a, find a date, you know. Yeah, and appreciate you coming and talking on a microphone after waking up and your day job oh, being yeah. talking on a microphone for a few hours. Yeah, no, man. It's <laughs> it's totally cool. And like I said, I'm I'm humbled that you would think I qualify for this. I walked in, I was like, oh, this is like for real, for real. Yeah, this it's is nice. nice, man. It's nice. Yeah, I was like, oh, well, like a, you. They, Everybody must have canceled. It is it is Fourth of July. Most people are out of town. I it guess. is a holiday yeah, weekend. It's a holiday weekend. It is a holiday yeah, weekend. We like hey, let's get let's get this Graham guy in here, <laughs> batting relief right now. Now we saw that you were in town. I was like, I, this is my chance to get Graham on the pod. Oh, he's in town. So well, anytime you're doing more for me than I'm doing for you. Trust me, you, you make me feel important on some level. So it's cool, dude. dude and, we, and we would love to get out to California. No, well, to, come on, man. We'll, we, we beers do a, on me. I want I want to get a raise. I want we want to rent in perfect raise rowdy style, like an old school like winter. Bago, like mm -hmm. not the nicest, but nice enough to sleep in kind of thing. just yeah. drive across the country and hit all those little touring markets that I've done yeah. as a tour manager on the road and then work our way out. Maybe, maybe that's what, maybe we do road to stage coach there 2024. You Razor you maybe that's our thing that we try to do, but well, hopefully I'll be hosting it again. I, that's I, what I'm saying. I got a good report card that my agent was like, Hey, they, they, they're going to want yeah, you back. Yeah, if you're hanging out with, with scooter and fucking Luke and having a good time, that's that's it kind was of cool. what they want. Yeah, yeah, shout out Scooter. I love you, buddy. And your son's got a nice jump shot. Hey, You're we welcome. love that. Shout out to the jump shot. <laughs> well, y'all be sure to check out our boy, Graham Bum. What's the show called? It's just called Amp Country Radio. Amp Country Radio. They wanted to call it Country Grammar, but I was like, I don't know, man. I don't want to be like the guy that's like that nickname. Oh, Country Grammar's here, you know? I was like, yeah. we'll call it Amp Country Radio. Hell yeah. Well, check out Amp Country Radio um, on Amazon Music, Amazon Music, right? It's on Amp, yeah. On Amp. Amp. Which is on Amazon Music. Which is yeah. on Amazon. A MP. It's all owned by Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos yeah. owns it all. <laughs> yeah. But uh, check out our boy Graham. Follow him on all the socials and um, check out his show. Appreciate you guys for watching and listening. As always, be sure to like, rate, subscribe, tell your mama and them. And of course, shout out to our friends at Big Friendly Productions, uh, Saxman Studios, Whale Tail Media, and our boy Mitch Wallace with the Digital Marketing Agency. For our boy Graham and our man Sweet Boy behind the camera, I'm Matt Brill, and this has been Outside the Round. Stay one place for too long. I ain't never been the best at saying I love you to a girl I love. Only got a couple tricks on my sleeve. They use